It's a peer reading strategy, and that's an acronym mm -hmm. for prompts, evaluates, expands, and repeats. Can you take a moment to go into a little bit more detail about what the peer strategy is, how early childhood educators can use it in their classroom, and how they can help teach parents to use it at home when they're reading with their children? Sure. So um, the P prompt is to really bring attention to something in the book. And so you kind of throw out a question and point to a picture. And so, oh, you know, what's this? It's as simple as that. Or, um, you know, what on the page looks like this? Anything, just a way to get them to talk. And the child will usually give you a one word answer, normal. And then, so when you hear that, you're, when you're evaluating, the E is basically saying, yes, it's a blank, whatever it is. So you're confirming what the child said, or you might have to take it a step further and try to get them to that place of giving you what it is or what you're looking for. So you just respond, oh yes, it is a blank. And then what you try to do is expand on that language. That's the next E in peer, is to take it one step further where you're going to introduce some other language. So let's say um, it's a flower, just throwing it out there. So um, the child will say flower. So you could say, oh yes, it's a beautiful pink, um, you know, frag fragrant flower. Um, it's, you know, and start using different language to describe the flower. So you're expanding on what the child said and adding some more words to it. And then finally, you want to be able to get the child to look at that again and perhaps use some of the language that you just used. So it's, that's the repeat, is to then bridge what you're adding to what the child said to try to expand the language. Definitely, and that's huge because that's how they're gonna get the, the extra language and the understanding of how to use adjectives and expand on their thoughts and ideas. And, you know, even reading a book like Peppa Pig or, uh, again, we love the Julia Donaldson books in our house. Um, even Franklin, these books that are classic children books and even some of the, the newer ones, they have language that you're not gonna use on an everyday basis. For example, uh, for the Gruffalo, a mouse took a walk through a deep, dark wood, right? Well, mm -hmm. I don't typically talk about the forest mm -hmm. being woods, right? And saying that it's deep and dark when, oh, look at the forest. Like, I don't even, when we passed a wooded area, I don't say, oh, that can also be called the woods. Right. And it's deep and dark. Well, it's just giving them that opportunity to have the exposure to the language and words that you wouldn't even think about necessarily using in your everyday communication with them, right? right? And once you start doing this, at first it seems forced, mm -hmm. but then it just becomes a natural part of that reading experience with your child. Yeah, and that's very true because anytime you're learning something new, and you're trying to kind of follow the steps, the peer steps, um, it could be awkward because naturally you just wanna read what's on the page. Just read it for what it is, point to the pictures, move on. Read what's on the page, point, move on. So it's kind of forcing yourself to slow it down a bit and just try to enjoy it and try to use it as um, a language experience. Mm -hmm. And it can be a little bit awkward at first, but like you said, with practice, it becomes a lot more natural 